Here's a behind the scenes peek at the prep work behind one of my large metal sculptures. Basically, I party. But first, I've made a simple model of the building to work out how the sculpture will be positioned. This is the atrium of the engineering building at Duke University, and the sculpture will consist of the four orbs, each a different size, hanging at a different height, each on its own chain. From the bottom to the top, they're four, five, six, and seven feet in diameter. Of course, the real building has walls and stuff, but I'm leaving them out to better see how the sculpture will fit in the space. After experimenting with many possible arrangements, I've placed the four orbs for the best viewing as people climb the stairs and walk around the different levels of the building. The structure of the orbs aren't quite identical. That would be boring. Instead, they evolve just slightly to make people curious to look and see what's going on. They become lighter and more open as you move upwards. I think it's a really elegant design, and I'll explain the math behind it in some future video. All you need to notice here is that the orbs can be assembled from flat pieces that have to join somehow at specific angles between the planes. I had the parts laser cut from aluminum. Later they'll be powder coated in four colors, but what you see here is the raw metal before they're colored so I could test that everything fits and not worry about scratching the coloring. There are bolt holes in the parts where they're supposed to connect together. In order to have them meet properly, I also made two kinds of small brackets that are formed to the necessary angles. The laser cutting process is very accurate, so if I've done my calculations correctly, everything should go together precisely with 360 nuts and bolts. That's what I'm about to test. If they don't fit, then I'm going to feel like an idiot for wasting a lot of money on useless pieces of metal. Step one is to put brackets on the short arms of each piece. There's a particular orientation for the brackets and the bolts that makes everything work out, taking into account the thickness of the metal. For 30 parts, this step uses 60 brackets and 120 of the nuts and bolts. I'm not using washers for this test fit to save time. You can see that lets me work really fast. But for the final assembly, after they're powder coated, a pair of washers will also be used to protect the surface. There's also a second type of bracket with a different angle. It goes on the end of a longer arm and uses a bunch more nuts and bolts. This goes on until I have all 30 modules ready. Then the modules can join together. I first made this pentagon equator, then built up from there to make the first hemisphere, a sort of metal igloo. There's an intricate logic to the overs and unders and the three-sided and five-sided openings. But if the angle brackets are on correctly, they serve as a guide, so it's actually pretty difficult to make a mistake at this point. Then, like a klutzy turtle, it gets flipped over on its back, and the second hemisphere is built, just like the first. To suspend it, three of the bolts are replaced with these eye bolts for connecting the chain. Even though any one eye bolt is rated to carry several times the entire weight, I'm using three to distribute the load, and so it hangs with a three-fold axis vertical. And also for safety and redundancy, you don't want it to be raining sculptures out of the sky someday. Then I can suspend it slightly and make sure it keeps its shape without distortion. I like my work, so I don't mind telling you that I think it looks really great. Even in this uncoated state with raw metal, fingerprints, and the factory printing still on the surface, I can tell I'm going to love the final result. I'm really proud of this design, and I can't believe I never thought of it years ago. Not only is it simple and incredibly solid, but there's also a strong internal coherence to its logic. And I love the blend of planarity and spherically. And this is just one of the four orbs. I find the next three to be even more elegant. Ball two goes together in the same igloo manner. The main difference is that the parts are larger, and each has a small central opening. This gives it a lighter feeling and a sense of development from one orb to the next that should keep curious viewers engaged. Peek inside to see that the interior is also worth checking out. There's a beautiful regularity to the various openings that gives a nice organic feel to the structure. Orb 3 is similar, but even larger. Instead of using really big pieces, I made half-sized pieces that overlap to form the larger shape, so you can see there's an extra layer of metal here in the joint. I built just one hemisphere of this one because I didn't think I'd learn anything more by making the complete sphere. Now for the big one, Orb 4. I finally get to have my sculpture party. I invited some friends over to help me put it together. Believe me, 
having lots of people working in parallel is much faster than doing it yourself. We were a bit cramped in my studio, but it's a good way for me to test out the instructions for teaching others to make it. The steps are similar, making modules, starting with the Pentagon Equator, building it up to an igloo, turning it over, then adding the second hemisphere. The real assembly will be the public sculpture barn raising, and I wanted to check that I could teach a group of people how to get all the parts, brackets, and nuts and bolts together in the correct orientations. Even with party libations, it all went together well. Then, with the test fitting complete, I could disassemble everything, bring the parts to be powder coated, ship them to North Carolina, and be ready for the big assembly event. Stay tuned for a future video with more details.